All right, so we're going to be taking a look at using the Strata collections in a nonlinear context. I have an Unreal Engine 5 project with a WISE integration, and we're also going to be taking a look at the same assets that, or some of the similar assets that were used in the linear design video that are from the robotic collection. So we'll take a look at the finalized design, and we'll look at some of the Reaper projects from the Strata collection that I may have altered, and some of the design choices that I made, and how I'm basically using the files that we're rendering out of the Strata collections uh, for this particular um, Unreal 5 project. I'm going to be using some sounds from the movement servo stutter subproject and as well the footstep the propulsion footstep subproject again. So we'll start off and get into the servo stutter. So let's get in there. And actually I already have a um, a version saved of this. So here's my version of this project. And I didn't make too many alterations actually. So the first thing I used was probably the most important thing to have a look at is the constant hard. Let me find that. All right, so here I use this. And essentially exported that as it is. Not many changes to it as far as that goes. Okay, so taking a look at the slow, medium servo movements. I actually did make one kind of small change to these which is that I muted, uh, essentially, I guess I muted the entire first layer. So these two I ended up cutting out. I just felt like for what I was gonna do with this track, I really just needed kind of like the pneumatics and that kind of piston-like um, clatter type of sound It's in there. So and finally, I grabbed the fast, large, group here. So this fast large group, I also didn't really make any changes to these. Again, I was pretty happy with a lot of these servo sounds, the way that they were. Uh, and I knew that I was going to be doing a lot of stuff within the uh, within WISE anyway, to kind of manipulate the pitch and that sort of thing. Looking at the propulsion footstep, uh, pretty familiar with this already, so I don't need to if you watch the linear design video, then this is, I use these same footsteps. Um, I did change quite a bit with them in here, or enough at least to mention. All right, so we'll take a look at the footstep large. That's what I used. And a couple of the big changes were just kind of toning down some of these additional metal impact sounds and kind of focusing. Really just kind of doing a premix for how I knew that it was kind of match up with the actual character. And the other thing that I added was some Enrage automation or some Enrage effects. So I have some uh, flanger here. Again, it's pretty subtle stuff, really is not, you know. Did some pitch and timbre warping or I used the warp effect in the timbre. So again, Enrage plugin comes with the, um, the Strata subscription. So solely I've kind of just been using this for anything I've been experimenting with. And I really love this, um, this particular plugin. It has, you know, all these different categories and things in there that you can play with. So it's kind of a one size fits all in many cases. Uh, the other thing here, would it, I, I may have put something on our pneumatic layer. Let me see if I can hear that a little bit better. All right, so I did a little bit of voice shifting, some pitch shifting using the envelope. And essentially like these small little changes that I'm making aesthetically to a, a lot of these sounds were just kind of just push it more in the direction I wanted. I, I kind of, it was in between with this particular uh, character model where he kind of has like a rustic um, sort of like borderline steampunk sort of look. But then when you look closer, he kind of uh, is a little bit more futuristic, uh, a little cleaner looking. Um, so kind of trying to find a balance between those. I just did some things in here that made the pneumatics and some of the more mechanical aspects of these layers um, just sound, um, 
you know, a little bit more um, techie or fut future like, if that makes sense. Okay, so now comes the fun part of getting all of these sounds rendered out and imported into Wise. So, fortunately, got this real Wise Reaper extension. It's going to make it more, more or less painless as possible. So, the way this kind of works, and I will have a, an opportunity to talk about this a little bit more in depth in a different video, but essentially, Rewise is going to be looking at what is inside of our render to file menu. Basically, at the bottom here, we see this render 72 files. That's based on what I have selected or what I have checked <clears throat> up here. So all these boxes, that's the 72 files. So it's basically all the variations from the layer tracks, right? So five variations from the metal impacts and um, so on down the line, except for the, any tracks that are um, silent or where there's nothing on them where, where I've selected those. So it's basically looking at that render, those files to be rendered, it's reading them, and then I can make some directives about how those files get transferred into WISE by basically making objects. So I make the object as it would be in WISE, and then I put the name over here, and you can use wildcards from the Reaper project. Basically say, here's what constitutes the sound effects. So I basically have set up that all my regions within, or all my selected regions within the Reaper project are going to basically be used, what the sound effects are going to be referencing. And then I set up a hierarchy. So there's random containers based on what the tracks are. So I'll have random containers for these three or um, you know, however many different tracks. And then also it will even look at markers. So I have markers set up for my blend containers, which all this is evident down here. I can actually just show, this is a preview of what it'll look like, right? So pretty cool stuff. Pretty much as I kind of said, and of course, I'll have the other servo sounds to bring as well, but here's what it, how it works. All right, so I gotta do some rendering. I'm just gonna overwrite something that might be in there already. Okay, so go ahead, that's fine. And here we are inside of WISE now. So there, brought all that stuff right into my WISE project. All right just like I had it. Having said that, let's go ahead and start taking a look at the WISE project and how this is integrated in Unreal Engine 5 and how like this whole thing kind of came together. So give you an idea about it. All right, so the first element to take a look at, uh, which everything else is kind of built up around and it's very much the kind of key sound for, the, uh, for this particular kind of robot um, is gonna be the constant hard uh, servo loop that's kind of running in the background. So what I kind of had designed or an idea that I had was that this servo or this kind of uh, gear sort of movement uh, would just kind of drone on and on. And then every other event or action um, made by the player's input would maybe alter the pitch um, and the tone or the volume levels and maybe even also the... Um, the low pass filter that's on there. Um, so basically as the character moves around, the servo should change. Um, if I had, you know, the opportunity to spend more time kind of carving this design up, maybe I would do some other interesting things like make uh, little tiny stutters or have some more random events to kind of add flair. But nonetheless, uh, taking a look in the RTPC window, again, there's basically a game parameter that's tracking the movement speed and the acceleration of the uh, animation as it goes you know, forward. And so that's what the game parameter is, this driving the voice pitch to change and the uh, volume and all these other things. So we can kind of hear that real quick right here. All right, so one of the first things that kind of is affecting the servo loop is going to be the jump event. So uh, it's this is definitely the most apparent. So far, I, I, it's the one I'm the most happy with. 
But essentially, anytime the jump event occurs, and I have it pulled up here so we can see it, um, the jump event is basically going to set a couple different changes for some of the RTPC parameters on that uh, constant hard loop that's there. So it's going to set the voice pitch and set the voice volume um, to a particular relative value. And then it's also going to, the jump is also going to obviously trigger a jump, a sound that's, you know, specifically designed for that, um, that mechanic. And then the other thing to take kind of a look at, and I'll, I'll just play this quickly so we can hear the jump mechanic. Just as taking off or initiating the jump is kind of uh, making changes to those um, to those RTPC values for the pitch and volume, landing also is kind of doing the same and yet opposite things, so driving the pitch in a different direction. Um, so yeah, I, I had quite a bit of fun just playing around with that particular game parameter and using that to drive the servo and then compounding on it with these other events. So. All this one is doing that's different is just setting the, the values to a different level. And then also whenever it's finished, it's resetting the, the pitch and volume to their, you know, to the prior state. So the state that it was when the loop began playing to begin with. It may be a more elegant way of doing this. This is my brushing up on Wise project, so to speak. So there's definitely a lot of new features since the last time I've been really in deep with it. Uh, and then there's a stop here as well. So this is stopping a power-up sound, which may or may not be playing. It has a very low probability of playing, but um, it's something I decided, it's a minor thing, but it will cut that sound off as well. Getting in more into the footsteps and the actual uh, mechanical movements of this, um, this particular character model. Um, the one thing I kind of wanted or tried to do is build some layers. Um, so this is actually going to be turned way down in the mix uh, when you would hear it. But these are kind of some slow, clunkier, a little bit more um, worn. Um, and I actually have a low pass filter on this so that it kind of is a more internalized sort of uh, background sound, so to speak. <laughs> So that kind of sets up and is the beginning of the mechanics of the footstep. And then the actual impact of the footstep will kind of end that and sort of cut that off as the impact begins playing. So nothing too dramatic to look at here, but we'll open up and take a look at the footsteps blend blend container. So it hasn't changed too much from the, uh, the Reaper project. Uh, I just ended up making a few minor mix adjustments. You can take a listen here. All right, so I actually did end up adjusting the pitch a little bit after the fact, which I actually did that with quite a few things, probably more than I suspected I, I might. Um, but yeah, that's going to be kind of like the main footstep uh, impact sound. Technically, I believe, is probably one of the, the louder sounds in the mix, what ends up kind of also driving. Um, it's like the counterpoint, really, the, to, the, uh, to the servo or the constant hard servo drone that kind of goes on. So those two things are kind of like sandwiching everything else between them and everything kind of operates based on what those are doing or to affect one or the other. So as I was sort of kind of talking about before, the foot impact mechanic and the foot plant mechanics, here's actually taking a look at these two events and seeing what, it, what all is actually going on there. If one of the pneumatic layers is playing from the foot plant still, when the impact hits, it should release the envelope on there that controls the volume and I think the pitch to a little bit of an extent. So that's really, uh, again, just kind of you know blending things together and kind of making everything um, mesh pretty, uh, pretty well. And here's the foot plant 
event. So taking a look at that, what that's actually playing is going to play these um, the medium foot buildup or the slow medium uh, buildup sounds, which you already took a look at. And then it's also posting another event, which I, this is kind of a weird way that I um, implemented this. But um, I, again, I was kind of trying out some new things and some some uh, some things I haven't done in a while. So it actually triggers another event, which I think my idea was that this servo movement event that it's uh, posting, that I'm gonna use. I was gonna. I had another uh, use case for that, and there's other places that it might also get triggered uh, from from other movements. So I think from the I was playing around with having the arm movements trigger that as well at certain points in time. Here we can kind of take a look at the pitch modulation or the voice pitch modulation using this envelope. So the envelope is basically acting as the RTPC uh, and the envelope, it gets triggered by the event and then released by the foot impact event. So kind of interesting way of doing it. I think I also experiment with having it on auto release, but either way, it'll end whenever the the footstep comes down and I did that because there's, if there's possibly varying uh, footstep speeds at some point in time, then that could be helpful in terms of, you know, making sure that the two events or the sound coming out doesn't step all over each other and also kind of keeps things sounding nice. Having a look at our fist events, these are kind of, I mean, realistically, there's not much more to say about these. They're very, they act very similar to our footsteps in, in the sense of the design, you know, purpose. So, um, they're also going to be manipulating the RTPCs for that uh, servo, the constant hard servo is going, kind of going on there. So that's similar to also the jump mechanic. It's doing that. So that's all that's happening. There's not too much new. Um, and again, kind of making use of the two event sort of system to take care of this, this particular animation action. So here's the fist hit. <laughs> And here's the finish. So the finish, again, is going to reset some of the pitch and volume voice parameters for that, for the uh, the constant hard servo loop. So again, same kind of thing, but now we're just doing it with the punches. Uh, the other thing with the fist hits, obviously there's some pneumatics and things being triggered to play. So the medium fist hits, which you can play that right here. All right. So we have those kind of going on. And the beginning of it also obviously is triggering some of the uh, pneumatics as well. So very similar to the other, um, you know, the footsteps and the jump movements, just another, you know, um, part part of the anatomy, so to speak. All right, so now we're finally back to the uh, the coffee, coffee machine, the instant coffee machine anyway. So these power up and power down movements, they're just kind of a small little extra flare that I, uh, I experimented with having in the um, you know the animation trigger so that whenever the um, the player starts and stops movement, there's a chance that one of these two things may or may not play. Um, not totally like in love with the implementation of it, but I kind of I'll probably keep playing around with it and see if I can um, make it you know inc incorporate it a little just a little bit better. But the idea is that uh, the power up and the power down um, it can happen you know like almost subsequently, like almost instantaneously one after the other. So because of that, we have, um, you know, some RTPC controls. Well, those, those are aside from the fact of um, how the, how the event is being triggered, but each event, so there's a power up and a power down event, each event um, turns the other one off. So each one is kind of automating the other one's RTPC values to change it. And here's how that sounds. All right, so the game parameter also is uh, part of part of this as well. So as the player is moving forward or backward, so the idea is if the player stops, the appropriate event will trigger. But also as the event is triggering, the the speed or the um, movement data is going in the opposite direction and is going to also take care of these pitch and volume shifts without you know needing to trigger anything else. 
All right, cool. So thanks for watching the interactive demonstration, sound design demonstration using the Strata collection. A um, little bit more focused on how to bring those sounds into WISE and start to do something kind of creative. So I think it should be a good illustration of basically how well organized the Strata collections are and how seamless it is to kind of get these into a nonlinear format and start tweaking them. And, uh, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty effortless as far as rendering everything out. Even if you're not using real wise, um, you can get your sound out of the Reaper project and start playing with it inside of wise relatively quickly, start kind of mocking up, uh, an example from this, from these library collections. Um, it's really like a very fast and easy process because, you know, essentially you're going through these, these, um, strata collection projects and you're finding things you like and they stand out pretty easily. You can see how things are, you know, put together and you can take components of them you like, you can substitute in your own components and uh, works out really well. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video and, you know, let us know in the comments how you're enjoying these or, you know, if you have any feedback or any suggestions. So take care and we'll see you in the next one.